Hi, this is Emmanuel Kaduri, and you are welcome to Emostel Academy. In this new video, we continue from where we stopped from the previous class. Still on function, but this time around, we just want to see how um, we want to be able to determine whether one variable depends on the other or not. There are conditions, and I will explain. Now, if you have this one, consider this first one, which is x plus y is equal to 1. All right? So in this condition, obviously, um, the two variables are like any one of the two. If I choose to send, maybe I send um, x, I said I send a y to the other side, and then you know this one was plus before. By the time it gets to the other side, it becomes minus. So it will become x alone left. Y move to the other side as minus y. Okay, that's what will happen. So this is x is equal to 1 minus y. In this scenario, we say that x depends on what? On y. Meaning that whatever is it, the value of y is, if we slot it into this calculation, that is what determines the value of x. So, which means x depends on y. But when you come to this matter of dependency, there is a condition. In that condition, that condition implies that when for one variable to depend on the other, the independent variable should be able to, um, whenever we slot any value in the independent variable, it should give only one answer, one answer for the dependent variable. A case whereby it gives more than one possible answer then we say that the um, other variable does not depend on, on the independent variable. So let me just give you an example. Okay, if I want to do this one the other way around, for instance, um, x plus y equals to 1, I can decide to send x to the other side. Okay, maybe I can just say, instead of me sending y, okay, I can decide to make y stay and send x to the other side. So if I want y to stay, it will be y is equal to 1. You know, y alone remaining, positive y. Then this positive x going to the other side, it becomes what? Minus x. So in this case, it means y, it means y depends on x. So that's what it just simply means, okay? Any one I decide to send to the other side becomes the independent variable and its value will determine the value of the one on the left-hand side, which is the dependent variable. Okay, so I told you before that for you to say that a variable depends on another, whenever we slot in anything for the independent variable, it must give us only one definite answer for the dependent variable. If that happens, then it means that this variable depends on the other. For instance, if I decide to say, okay, let x be equal to 5, okay, we will we'll then have it as y is equal to 1 minus 5. Then it means that, okay, um, you know, I like to first put it in brackets to just make someone know that, okay, this is a number that was just introduced. So if you put it that way, then 5 is positive. So plus times minus is minus. Then we have 5. Okay, so y would become I am having 1 but owing 5, so it means that um, by the time I pay, I will still be owing 4. So y is equal to minus 4. You get that? So that is how it goes. Okay, so if I decide to, um, 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 as, as it is now, we see that for a single value of x, for a single value of x, which is 5 here, we have a corresponding value of y as minus 4 single also, which means that y is truly dependent on x. Now, let's check the second example. So, we are done with this. So, let's, let's check the second one. In the second example, we have it that um, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. In this example, 
um, let's make y the dependent variable. Let's try to make it the dependent variable. So we have y is equal to 1 minus x squared. y is equal, because this x was positive, by the time it gets to the other side, it becomes negative. All right, and 1 still remains where it was. So we have y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. All right, now as we have it here, we cannot say, we can't say that y depends on x. Instead, we can rather say y squared depends on x squared. Do you get it now? But which is not really uh, mathematically ideal. When we are talking about a variable depending on the other, we are talking about the variable itself, not the power, not the exponent of that variable, but the variable itself. So in an attempt to make um, that happen, all right, mathematics says when we have power on one side, that power will go to the other side as a square root, okay, as a root, rather. So if it is a, uh, if it's raised power 2, it's a square, it goes to the other side as a square root. If it's a cube that is raised power 3, it goes to the other side as a cube root. Uh, root. So we have y is equal to plus or minus. It's a mathematics practice. We always ignore this part because we only need the positive result in most cases, okay? But ideally in mathematics, when you want to do a square root of something, you always put plus or minus because there are two possible answers, okay? So we have um, minus x squared. Okay, let me just explain why we have this plus and minus, why it is two possible answers. Just a brief explanation. If we have um, x squared is equal to 4, it means a number, a certain number raised to power 2 is equal to 4. That's what we mean. I'm just, let's just keep this one. I want to explain to you why this plus and minus should be there. So if we say x squared is equal to 4, then it means a certain number raised to power 2 is equal to 4. Simply put, a number multiplies itself twice to give us 4. That is another way we can express that, okay? Good. So when we say x squared is equal to 4, and then um, we want to take away this square so that x alone, we want to find the value of x, we take it, since it's a power, it goes, the opposite of a power is root, okay? So since it's a power, we take it to the other side as a square root. So since it's a square, we take it to the other side as a square root. When it's a square root, you don't write 2 here. But when it's a cube root, from cube root and above, you can write 3, 4, 5, whatever it is, but if it's a square root, okay, we know that there's an invisible 2 here, but we don't bother to put it, okay, because there cannot be, it cannot be 1, there cannot be 1, the smallest is 2. So from that 2, we write, we don't write it from 2, we start writing it from 3, but we know that there's a square root there, okay? Now, if we say x is equal to um, square root of 4, square root of 4 means that I'm looking for a number, I'm looking for a number that multiplies itself twice to give us 4. Okay, so now that number is definitely true. Do you agree with me? But, well, you know, all through our primary school days and all that, we, they, we only concentrate on the positive answer. But ideally, mathematically, okay, the results of a square root are always two, positive, two possible answers. Okay, I will tell you why. So the number, the result here is plus or minus 2. So which means x is either equal to positive 2 or x is equal to negative 2. That is the meaning of this expression here, um, this um, um, equality here, okay? x is equal to plus or minus 2. The meaning of this statement is that x is either equal to 2 or x is negative 2. Now, we want to test it, right? We want to test it because the thing says x raised to power 2 is equal to 4. So we want to see whether we are going to get 4 with these two. So x raised to power 2 is equal to 4, right? So now when x is 2, we say 2 raised to power 2. 2 raised to power 2 means 2 times 2, okay? That's x raised to power 2 means x times x. So 2 raised to power 2 means 2 times 2, and that is equal to what? 4. You see that? Then, um, <clears throat> if, it is, if x is minus 2, minus 2 raised to power 2 means, mathematically, it means minus 2 times another minus 2, okay? Now, I told you that when two signs multiply each other, it becomes positive. So minus times minus is positive. Then 2 times 2 is what? 4. We still ended up getting 4. It shows you that whether x is equal to positive 2 or x is equal to negative 2, by the time you square it, the result is going to be the same, which is 4. So mathematically, we know that whenever you are finding the square root, you always put what? Plus or 
minus because there are always two possible results for every square root. All right? So that is why this plus or minus is there. Now, without doing anything, without saying anything, it has already shown that we are going to get one, more than one possible answer for this equation. Okay? It means we are going to get more than one possible answer. So because of the fact that we are going to be getting more than one possible answer for y, it means that x is not, um, which means that y is not um, dependent on x because it broke the rule of dependence. The rule of dependence is that for a variable to depend on another variable, okay, um, it's, can, the, the other variable, the independent variable, can only yield one result as the result of the dependent variable when the independent variable is replaced. So which simply means that if I put any value for x here, for instance now, if x is equal to zero, all right, it means y is equal to plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of one minus zero, plus or minus the square root of one, all right, the square root of one is one, so it means y is equal to positive one, or y equals to what, negative one, all right, so that is the meaning. We see that we have two possible results for y in this case, all right, good. So, because we have more than one result for y, y is not um, directly, um, uh, y is not a dependent variable on x, okay? It, it broke the rule. But in the first example, yes, y depends on x. All right? So, now, I want to bring you to an important notice. Whenever we say something depends on something, if I say y, depends on x in any situation it means y is a function of x you see y is a function of x don't forget this we are going to need it in the next class so it means y is f of what x it is not like y is f times x in this case it's not f multiplied by x it's actually f a function of x so it means y is a function of x this is just, it's just the mathematical representation of this statement, okay? Take note of this. If y depends on x, it means y is a function of x. But if y it does not depend on x, then no story. Do you get it now? So, let's check more examples to see cases whereby y depends on x, okay? Let me just quickly turn this off, rub this off. Okay, now, let's check example three out. X squared plus Y is equal to one. Okay, in this case, let's still keep Y. So Y will be equal to one minus X squared. All right, in this case, anything with slotting, we are not having a square root here. We are not having any kind of root here. Okay, but anything with slotting as the value of X will give us a single value of Y, sharp. All right, if it, there had been a square root, then that wouldn't happen. But here, there's no square root, okay? So we have um, y is equal to 1 minus x squared. So let's say, let's just assume, let's say x is 0. Okay, if x is 0, then we have y is equal to what? 1 minus um, 0 squared, which simply means y equals to 1 minus 0, or y equals to 1, all right? So if we assume x to be equal to, to 1, so we have one, y is equal to what? One minus one squared, simply one minus one, because minus times plus is minus. So one minus one, then y is equal to what? Zero. We see that we keep having a single value of y for any value of x. So the shortcuts to all this, without you having to do any calculation or anything, the shortcut is that for y to depend on x, y itself must not carry any power. If y should carry power, at any instance, it will cease to be a direct function of x. That's just the shortcut. So what you should look out for if you find this in any question is that is the independent variable carrying a power? Is the one, I mean the dependent variable, is it carrying a power? The independent variable can carry power, I think it might not, all right? That doesn't really matter. Your target is the dependent variable or the, val the, or the alphabet you are trying to make the dependent variable. Okay, so if you, the moment you just see, you just notice that the dependent variable 
carries power, what is supposed to be the dependent variable carries a power, then just know that it is no longer a dependent variable for the other variable on the other side, okay? So, which means in this case, without us doing any story, look at this. This carries a power. This carries a power. So, and this also carries a power, okay? But this, this, and this, in, in the three other examples, Y did not carry any power. So, at the end of the day, we can just conveniently say, Y is this ball. Then, it, you, it, that is not really always a determinant, too. I just remember there are some kind of instances that will lead to quadratic equation. Any instance that leads to a quadratic equation, you know that results of quadratic equations are usually more than one. You know that, right? So if, if you have any one, for instance, if I have something like this, um, y is equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. If I have something like this, right? And then we have y here. So y is not a dependent um, is, y is a function of, um, of, of x here, but it does not, it's not um, like, because you are going to have more than one result here. And then because, because every quadratic equation will likely give you more than one answer. See, uh, as in simply put, okay, so whenever you have this kind of case too, in this case too, you will not, because the thing is just to determine if a variable is a function of another. That is what we are just trying to determine whether a variable is a function of another. So in this case, we will say that y is not a function of x because of the fact that it will give us more than one result. Okay? And so that's just it. Um, if you check this one out, we have y. Um, this last one, y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared. All right? So it means y is equal to the square root plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared. And then, at the end of the day, whatever result you get here, you see that it's going to give you um, two possible answers and all. So that's just it. That's just the tip I want to give to you. And that is the end of this class. Peace out.